This video clip is a part of a teaching message done by Pastor Carl Silva in the year 2011. There's something that we should know, and the devil hates a missionary minded church. The devil what? Come on, say it. He hates a missionary minded church. When a church is worshiping, when a church is loves people, when a church is caring, praying, soul winning, the enemy says that church is my number one target. But the Lord protects the church. The Lord adds to the church. Nothing can happen to our church like that. But there's something that we should do. And the Bible says that as believers, as members of a church, we are supposed to guard the unity of the church. Did you understand? It doesn't say God guards the unity of the church. It says we as the body of Christ were to guard the unity of the church. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Yeah, Ephesians chapter 4. And I want to just show you that in a moment. <clears throat> Paul says, Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you, believers, to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you were called. And then he gives you four things that we should walk in. Okay, listen carefully. With all humility, gentleness, patience, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love being diligent to guard the unity of the church in the bond of peace. Somebody says to you, pastor, or your, maybe your husband or wife says, what should I wear today to church? And as a pastor, I'll tell you what God's wardrobe is, what God's dress code is. This is what he says. He says, when you operate in the body of Christ, he says, I want you. Yeah, look at this. The first thing I want you to do is, I want you to clothe yourself with humility. Amen. How can you guard the unity of a church? Paul, uh, Peter says in 1 Peter 5.5, 5, he says, clothe yourselves with humility one for another. Come to church willing to wash somebody else's feet you don't come to church to find, figure out how, how I can be exalted but I come to church to see because I've walked with Jesus how can I minister to another brother or sister who might need some special encouragement today so I clothe myself with humility and that's such a beautiful thing yeah the Bible says God what he, he blesses the humble and he opposes the proud. And so in the church we learn humility. Then he says also clothe yourselves with gentleness. Yeah, there's no raised voices, there's no passing around, just all the you know, craziness of the world. But we just really are, we're gentle with each other. We're patient because we're not perfect. We exercise patience. And then we have selfless love agape love, an unconditional love. And that's how we wake up in the morning and we say, man, I'm going to church today. What an awesome thing. And through that all, we guard the unity of the body. And the Bible says it's the unity of the Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit gives this unity already. We don't have to manufacture unity. How do we have unity? The Holy Spirit has given unity. When you become a believer and you understand and go to church, you have a unity already in the church. Now, what are you supposed to do? You say, man, I want to guard that. I don't want to be the one who says an insensitive statement. I don't want to be the one who's just, just like, you know, running my mouth. This is God's people. And they're part of the body. They're members of my family. And I want to treat them well. Yes, you understand? And that's such a beautiful thing. So that's the first thing. Because God says, listen, Jesus is the head and we are his body. And it says in Ephesians 1.21, the fullness of God, Jesus, dwells in his body. 
His glory dwells in the body. So if you want to experience fullness with God, you cannot experience fullness unless you are uh, what? Hidden in the body. You are knit with the body. You understand your place in the body. You cannot experience fullness. Dr. Stevens said once, he said, many Christians get saved, but they do not have a revelation of the importance of the body of Christ. And sometimes they can pray. They say, I'll pray at home. I'll read my Bible at home. And by the way, Bible reading is good because the Bible gives me victory. Prayer is good. It gives me victory. But I like the way Dr. Stevens said it. He said like this. He said, if you read the Bible, you might have one-third the victory. If you pray, you'll have one-third the victory. But I'll tell you what's next. If you're not part of the body, you won't experience the full victory that's yours in Christ. Because the Bible says Jesus is the head and He gave us, we are the body, and He has put all things under His feet. So if He's the head, I'm the body, what is under my feet? All things that Jesus gives me, but I cannot experience it unless I am in the body of Christ.